The band, with members Robertson, Danko, Hudson, Manuel, and Helm, collaborated with Morrison, Dylan, The Grateful Dead, and Crosby, Stills and Nash. Their influential songs like, The Wait, The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down, and, I Shall Be Released, continue to define their legacy despite their separation. The band started as members of the Hawks, backing up Ronnie Hawkins in 1958. Garth Hudson was the only hesitant member. By the early 1960s, they were Toronto's top rock band. However, creative differences with Hawkins led to a split in late 1963. After leaving Hawkins, they became Levon and the Hawks. In 1965, John Hammond Jr. suggested they back up Bob Dylan. Dylan's manager's secretary, who was their friend, told Dylan to visit them in Toronto. Dylan was impressed by Robertson and Helm's music and invited them on tour. Robertson and Helm insisted that the rest of their bandmates be hired too. In September 1965, Bob Dylan and the band began their tour, using their new name. Early shows were affected by amphetamines, leading to negative reviews. After a month, Helm left to work on an oil rig but later rejoined the group. Dylan recorded with the band for a few years. The early sessions were not as successful as hoped, resulting in only a few singles. In 1966, Dylan had a motorcycle accident and secluded himself in Woodstock, New York. The band visited him and rented a house nearby called, Big Pink. During this time, they recorded demos and the band began writing their own music. In 1968, the band released their debut album, Music from Big Pink, which was a huge success. It featured three songs co-written by Dylan and their hit song, The Wait. After it was featured in Easy Rider, it became their number one hit. They were invited to perform at Woodstock and the Isle of Wight Festival. They then traveled to Los Angeles to work on their next album. Their self-titled album, released the following year, showcased a new direction for the band. They embraced a rustic aesthetic and unique musical arrangements, setting themselves apart from the music of the late 1960s. Each song captured the essence of rural America, from the Civil War in The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down, to the struggles of farm workers in King Harvest, Has Surely Come. The band received critical acclaim for their innovative work on their first two albums, with Rolling Stone and music critic Grail Marcus consistently praising them. They were also the first rock group to be featured on the cover of Time magazine after the Beatles. This attention allowed them to embark on their own headlining tour, however, fame started to affect their approach to music. Celebrities often feel anxious about their sudden fame. Their third album, Stage Fright, had darker themes of alienation and fear. It was produced by Todd Rundgren and mostly written by Robbie Robertson. Although it didn't receive as many positive reviews as their previous albums, some critics later appreciated the honesty and depth in their writing. Robertson's songwriting dominance caused conflict with Helm, who saw him as greedy and controlling. Robertson defended himself, citing the unreliability of other members. Despite the tension, they released Cahoots, collaborating with Dylan and Morrison. Toussaint's remarkable horn arrangements added to the album's impact. In 1976, Robbie Robertson wanted the band to retire due to exhaustion from touring. He organized The Last Waltz, a farewell concert on Thanksgiving for 5,000 fans. Martin Scorsese filmed the event, which featured special guest singers like Joni Mitchell, Neil Young, Bob Dylan, and more. After the last waltz, the band released their seventh album, Islands, which ended their contract with Capitol Records. They toured without Robertson after five years, but their popularity had declined and they played smaller venues. The band reunited occasionally between 1983 and 1999 for special events. Robertson later bought the rights to the band from all members except Helm. The band's influence on Pink Floyd, Fish, Elton John, Led Zeppelin, George Harrison, and Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young is undeniable. Even though they no longer make music, these artists regard the band as one of the greatest groups ever. Eric Clapton left Cream after being inspired by their album, and George Harrison's All Things Must Pass was heavily influenced by the band. Robertson and Scorsese became close friends after The Last Waltz and lived together. They collaborated on several films, including The Irishman and The Wolf of Wall Street. Raging Bull sparked Robertson's interest in scoring movies. They recently worked together on Once Were Brothers, Robbie Robertson and the band. 
Lee Von Halm, a soulful member of the band, was known for his southern accented singing voice, unique drumming style, and mastery of multiple instruments. He caught the attention of music legends and Bernie Toppin even named a song after him. John and Toppin frequently visited record stores to buy the band's latest albums due to their admiration for Helm. The band had an interesting set at Woodstock, playing one of the last slots at 10 p.m. They performed 11 songs, including, The Wait, This Wheel's on Fire, and, I Shall Be Released. Despite the rough condition of the festival site, with dressing areas turned into emergency rooms and muddy fields from storms, the band played their hearts out. Robertson wrote or co-wrote almost all of the band's songs, leading to him receiving most of the songwriting royalties, causing tension within the group. However, Helm and Danko believed that all members collaborated on the songs. After the group disbanded, Helm became a solo artist, but most of his songs were written by others. During their tour in England, Bob Dylan and the band planned to meet the Beatles at a hotel. Dylan, feeling overwhelmed, took a bath to relax. Robertson informed the Beatles that Dylan was freshening up while leaving him alone. When Robertson returned, he discovered Dylan submerged in the water. Thankfully, Robertson rescued him just in time. Robertson, who writes most of the band's songs, struggles to explain his creative process. The Wait is one of their most famous songs, with surreal lyrics and a biblical storyline written in one sitting. Robertson is influenced by Luis Buñol's use of real and mythical imagery. His lyrics are shaped by his imagination and life experiences. Currently, only Robertson and Hudson remain from the band's original lineup. After the breakup, Hudson worked on movie soundtracks with Cohen and Morrison, and pursued a solo career. Robertson also became a solo artist, soundtrack producer, and actor, collaborating with Scorsese. Despite past tensions, Robertson recently acknowledged the band members as his brothers.